Hello, and welcome to the ninth episode of our podcast, Smart Consulting Sourcing, the podcast about consulting procurement. My name is Elaine, and I'll be your host today. Each week, I'll give you the keys to better use, manage, and source consulting services. In this ninth episode, I'll explain how to negotiate a consulting agreement. Last week, I explained how to select the right consultant. Now you have a proposal that you think answers your needs. You can start negotiating. The first thing you need to do is prepare. But why prepare exactly? Well, let's go back to the goal of the negotiation. We want to find a satisfying agreement for both parties, right? And how do you buy a satisfying agreement exactly? Well, you need to have leverage. And that means to gather as much information as possible on the service, the provider, and the market. So what information do you need exactly? The, the tricky part in a consulting is that you can negotiate almost all the components of the proposals. That can be the scope, the team composition, the price. So the first thing you need to do is to decide what is it exactly that you want to negotiate. What are the parts that are on the table exactly? You have to be clear on your must-have and your nice-to-have. You may be looking for, for a very niche expertise. And in that case, the team composition is not negotiable. Or maybe you have a budget constraint. The cost is not negotiable and you have to go for a design-to-cost approach. There's another thing that you need to find out is how much you're willing to pay. And, and I always tell my clients to think value first. What is the impact that you expect from that project? Is it an impact on the bottom line, an impact on the top line, on the company valuation? What value does it that that project have for you? And then you can define how much you're willing to pay. And you can compare the price of the proposal and how much you're willing to pay. And that is the magnitude of the negotiation in terms of pricing. There's another thing that you need to figure out is how much latitude you have in the negotiation. When you have organized a competition and you have other proposals, or if you have alternative, if the deal falls short, then you have some more latitude than if your hands are tied. And finally, you have to build a team to bring to the table. And that team will depend on the side and the strategic importance of the project. But the goal is to collectively understand the proposal, propose winning compromises, and negotiate efficiently. When you all, all of these figure out, you can go to the second step, the deal. When you're negotiating for a consulting project, you have to anticipate what the consultants will do. What is the best deal for them? What are the alternatives that they will most probably propose? And, and keep in mind that the best deal is a positive outcome for both parties. Uh, that's the basis for a long-term relationship. You don't want to be that client for which we always had a 20% premium because negotiations are always a pain. Again, you know, this is a difficult negotiation because you have multiple dimensions. And in that context, you know, the, the BATNA, the best alternative to a negotiating agreement, and ZOPA, the zone of principal agreement, are concepts that can be really handy. You, you have to play with the different dimensions that you have defined as open to negotiation to draw scenarios and, and, and define what are the options that will be acceptable for your organization. It's also important to understand how the change in the scope and team staffing will impact the price so you can really understand the dynamics in that project. And you need also to identify the trade-offs that you're willing to accept. But at the end of that process, if the price is still too high, you can look at the uh, some saving opportunities. There's some, for instance, you have the travel expenses. Um, you can always either cap the travel expenses or um, include them as an all-inclusive pricing. So you 
keep them under control. You can also look at the expert staffing. Do you really need all those experts? Uh, and do you really need all the time that has been allocated to the project? One third um, saving opportunity is on the ramp up, run down staffing. It's, it's rare that you need 100% of the team day, since day one. So maybe if you kind of stretch their onboarding on a few days, then you can save them some, uh, some money as well. At some point, you will be ready to close the deal. And, and it's extremely important to draw a consulting agreement based on the content of the proposal. And you need to make sure that the main parts are there, in particular, the deliverables, the timeline, and the team composition. Another thing that is extremely important is to debrief the other consultants, you know, the ones that lost the project. And why is it so important? Is because this is the only way for them to improve the way they sell. You know, the, the best consultants, the ones that deliver the best quality work, are not always the best sellers and vice versa. So if you can give them some feedback on how well they did, maybe for the next client, they'll do a better job. and they'll earn more project. And likewise, you can ask some feedback on how you manage the sourcing process so you can improve how well you did and how well your teams interact with the consultants. Well, that's it for today. Next week, I will explain why I think consulting is a standalone category. In the meantime, if you have any questions or want to learn more about what we do at Consulting Quest, just send me an email at lelaine.lafitte with two A's and two T's at consultingquest.com. Bye and see you next week. Au revoir.